The fruits of the Spirit are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness and self-control. There's an old story, and I'm sure you may have heard it, of the uh, little Scottish dog in Edinburgh, Greyfriars Bobby. The dog who was so faithful to his owner that even when his owner died, Greyfriars Bobby used to go and sit on his owner's grave every day for about 18 years, I think it was, until the dog himself died. That story is often told as a story of faithfulness, of what it is to be loyal, to be steady, to be trusted and to be trustworthy, to stick, if you like, to what one thinks is one's purpose and what's the point. Faithfulness. It's a fruit of the Spirit. It's a quality that St Paul reckoned would grow and develop within Christian people as they lived the life of the Spirit, as we follow Jesus. It's one of those characteristics that we can see developing faithfulness. As with all the fruits of the Spirit, it's not necessarily something that we can do, something that we can try at, something that we can make sure that we do. It's a case of getting on with our discipleship, our Christian life, and faithfulness is one of those qualities that emerges. Faithfulness to God, faithfulness to God's purposes, a faithfulness to the ways of love and to following Jesus in the power of the Holy Spirit. But faithfulness is <clears throat> primarily a quality of God, which is why we see it as a quality in those who are bearing the fruits of the Spirit. Throughout the Old Testament stories, God constantly says to his people, I am a faithful God, faithful to several generations. You be my people and I will be your God. And on several occasions with Noah, with uh, Moses and the law, uh, with uh, Abraham, <clears throat> several times throughout the Old Testament, God says to the people he's speaking to at the time, I will be faithful to you if you will be my faithful people. God calls it, or it's called in those Bible stories, a covenant, a special binding promise of relationship that's two-sided, but initiated by God, and God promises on his behalf to be faithful to his people. God is loyal to his people. It's not so much, again, what God does in being faithful, but it's that God is faithful by his nature. And Jesus, of course, <clears throat> shows God's faithfulness uh, to us. And Jesus demonstrates faithfulness even as he comes to bring good news, to bring God's love, to show God's way. And then Jesus is faithful to his own message right to the very end, even when it means it will cost him his life and he must go to the cross and there give himself up. Such is Jesus's faithfulness to God and such is God's faithfulness to Jesus that that is not the end of the story. There is resurrection, there is life, a meaning, a purpose beyond death, which is God's way of saying, you can kill me, you can kill my son, but you will not stop me being faithful to you. So how do we show that spirit of faithfulness? It is by following Jesus, by living as Jesus lived, a way of self-giving, of loving, of showing other people that we live as Jesus does. Now, I don't find that easy. In fact, I find it really hard. The only way I can do it is by prayer, by resting in God, <clears throat> spending time with God and God's spirit and with God's people, holy people, and letting that spirit of God grow and develop within me. I think that's got to be the secret to bearing fruit. You can't force apples from an apple tree or plums from a plum tree or olives from an olive branch. You can only feed it, water it, tend it, look after it. And when the season is right, after waiting, the fruit will come. God is faithful to us. The more time we spend with God, the more we're likely to bear that fruit 
of faithfulness. One of my favourite worship songs, Faithful One, so unchanging, for his love is the anchor that we hold on to. The final fruit of the Spirit is self-control. It's a sign, I think, that God is with us and that God is a part of who we are, fulfilling our potential as human beings. I don't go along with this theological understanding, people who say, um, well, God is in charge. I'm not sure God is in charge, because if God was in charge, why would it be such a mess? God's not in charge, because if God's in control, people say God's in control of my life. Well, if God's in control of my life, what, what does that do with my own personal responsibility, which is God-given, and how do I use that day by day? For me, I think self-control is about letting Jesus in the power of the Holy Spirit, be in us. Letting Jesus fulfill himself in us and through us. Today, uh, you join me in uh, uh, my shepherd's hut, a DIY project. I built it all myself in a sabbatical some years ago because I wanted to create for myself a place, uh, a space where I could pray, a place where I could meet with God. I could make appointments with God. God could meet with me. I know that can happen anytime and in any place. But the intention of having a particular place and space and trying to make a time every day when I could pray was my way of trying to find self-control, uh, trying to propagate it, if you like, as a gift, uh, a fruit of the Spirit. It's a subtle difference, I think, to letting God be in us and through us and simply saying God is in control. Because I'm no good at self-control. I know that. And when I look at the life of Jesus... I see somebody who worked very hard at self-control. Jesus in the desert was tempted and taunted, but not undaunted, as the old hymn says. Jesus was tested, had to make decisions about himself and his life, the choices that he made, and thereby let God's spirit be a part of who he was, channeling him, directing him, guiding him, if you like. The other time when Jesus uh, faced that particular challenge was in the Garden of Gethsemane, the night before he was to die. Again, he said to God, let this cup of suffering pass me by, but not as I want God, but as you want, as Jesus communed with his heavenly father. That's the sense in which I think self-control is a fruit of the spirit. It is again a fruit of the lifelong experience of God's Holy Spirit working in our lives. Now, I'm no good at self-control. 
Some years ago I was a good four stone heavier than I am now. I lived in a rural part of Britain and did a lot of driving around that rural area, was there forever stopping to fill the car up with fuel, and every time I filled the car up with fuel I'd have a chocolate bar as well. That was one or two a week maybe, sometimes more often perhaps. And uh, sometimes I think, well I don't want a chocolate bar, I can't decide between that one or that one. So I'd have both. And that very soon was a recipe for having to buy much larger clothes. Self-control is something I am not good at. Since then, I've uh, practiced all sorts of ways of losing weight and have found that the one that works for me is that age-old uh, secret of all the things you know. Eating less portion sizes, not eating snacks, drinking plenty of water, counting the calories and doing some exercise. Sorry folks, that's what I've found to be the secret. It's all the stuff you know. Oh, and have some treats sometimes. But the phrase that I use and that Ruth and I use when we talk about this is being in the zone. It's as if there's that sort of space of, of mindset, of, of, of understanding where we put ourselves, where we know that we can eat and exercise responsibly and uh, take some uh, personal approach to our, our weight. And me particularly, I know it's always an issue for me. It's one of my weaknesses. Self-control as a fruit of the Spirit, I think, is about being in the zone of Jesus, of letting, if you like, the wind which is the Spirit fill our sails, putting ourselves in that place where God can work through us and be in us, so that the choices that we make are so much a part of who God is and what God wants uh, in our lives how to thrive and live a fulfilling and wholesome, healthy life, a good life uh, of well-being. I have spent some time in my life, some years ago now, but sailing. I loved sailing. Uh, and this uh, picture we're going to see it, it, of, a, of a sailor leaning right out is because the wind is blowing one way and blowing onto the sail and the sailor has to hold the sail against that wind in order to catch the power of the wind in order to keep the boat upright though as well as moving often has to hold on very tight to, uh, to the, the, the ropes and to lean way out so the boat doesn't get blown over. But the credit goes to the wind. The power belongs to the wind. The effort is the effort of the sailor. But without a partnership working with the wind, of being in the wind, of using all the skills of working with and within the wind, the sailor can't get anywhere. Self-control is a fruit of the spirit, I think, is like that boat skimming across the water when the wind is blowing. It's about putting yourself in the zone of being in God and letting the wind of God's Holy Spirit blow upon us, in us and through us, so that we live the life that God has called us to. And though 